Prince Harry has told a UK High Court he has been forced to leave the UK and relocate his family to the United States. In a witness statement read before the judge, the Duke of Sussex claims it was not his choice to quit the royal family. Now, it comes as Harry's trial against the British government wraps up with him challenging the decision to remove his taxpayer-funded security when he visits the UK. The judge in the matter has retired with judgment expected in the coming weeks. We're joined by Sunrise Royal editor Rob Jobson. Jobbo, good morning to you. Well, Prince Harry claims he was forced to quit the royal family. What did you make of those comments? <laughs> Ridiculous, to be honest, Jobbo. The fact is, you know, forced is a, ridic is a daft word, isn't it? I mean, he, wasn't he this is the guy that posted a, on Instagram that he was on a freedom flight and with his thumbs up looking rather silly? So, you know, you can't have it both ways. I mean, this is such... Such Harry, you know, he wants his cake and eat it. I mean, I've got a lot of, uh, of admiration for him, actually, in terms of what he did as a, as a, um, as a soldier. And he does become a, what they, the terrorists call a legitimate target when he, you know, so therefore there is some degree of question over whether or not he should have security. But to say he was forced to leave the royal family, forced to leave his home is nonsense. He chose to leave his home. He chose to live a different life in LA and he wanted to do that because he wanted to make money at about being a, about being a royal from his titles. And the Queen, who was the boss at the time, said, not happening, Harry. You're either in or you're out. Mm, OK. Now, you just got back from Dubai. You had a, a travelling with the King. Did he have anything to say about those royal dramas? What was it like? No, he was there focused really on on the UN and the COP28 conference because you know, this is something that he's been dealing with all his life. It's something that he's been a, a pioneer in. So rather than worrying about Omid Scobie and Endgame, he was more concerned with the end game of the Earth and making sure that people got the message about uh, climate change and that we've got to do something about it. But he was also carrying out a number of very important bilateral mm -hmm. meetings with senior Muslim leaders from the, you know, from president of, of, of Nigeria to other Arab leaders. And that was with the backdrop of what's going on in, in Gaza and with the Israel-Palestine crisis. So, look, you know, he is there to try and influence as well. He's a statesman. He's someone who's got a voice, not only on climate change, but other things. And, if he could, and he's been speaking about about um, uh, interfaith dialogue and all the things that are very important on this planet for many, many years. And I think he's a, a good voice um, mm -hmm. at the table to try to get things like that sorted out. And I think that is what he was doing in Dubai. Yeah, he's got a lot to do. He's keeping himself busy as well. But these personal issues, no doubt, would be weighing on him. Jobbo, thank you. <laughs> Always a pleasure.